It's week two of the NFL preseason, where depth charts and playbooks will be put to the test. It's the Elks and the Shamrocks on Monday night. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League finds us across the Atlantic and along the River Liffey in the wonderful city of Dublin, Ireland. Tonight we move on to week two of the preseason and we've got a compelling matchup here between the Salt Lake City Elks and the Dublin Shamrocks. Brandon Gaud and Charles Davis, happy to be back alongside you. And I'll tell you what, yes, it's just week two of the preseason, but now they've got one game under their belts and a lot of guys trying to prove some stuff down on the field here today. Not only that, these coaches like to win. And I used to think it really didn't matter who won in the preseason. Then I watched some of those shows that the NFL does, and you see the coaches in pre- Kick this one away, and off it goes. Devin Duvernay now returning from the end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Bringing them out is one of the most exciting players in the NFL every season. A former MVP, it's Lamar Jackson. And he remains the league's premier rushing threat and one of the biggest playmakers among quarterbacks. His goal each and every season, continue to expand his game as a passer and become well-rounded. All those highlight reel plays you see. And now off to the races, down the right side. A huge play there right off the bat, 57 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, Plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. First carry now for Gus Edwards. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Now it's second and 10. Off the option, here's Edwards. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run. Touchdown! Odell Beckham! An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Elks will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. Well, they spoke about the importance of getting off to a good start, and they're on their first drive, Charles, into the end zone for the touchdown. And what an advantage for them. They're already clicking one drive in, didn't need to wait to get up to full speed. We had heard about the extra time they put in with each other, trying to learn each other's skills, what they like, the whole deal, and it paid off early in this one. I would expect them to keep firing on the next drive and keep that connection going. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And this will not be returned. It's a touchback, and they'll begin at the 25. So now we'll get a look at the other offensive unit as they come out for their first possession. Bringing them out, the former Tar Heel, second-year pro, Sam Howell. And he left North Carolina with most of his school's records and at one point was thought to be maybe the number one quarterback in his draft class. He does bring deceptive athleticism and plenty of upside to the table. Add some consistency, and maybe he can really unlock what he can be in the NFL. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Now he'll try to pick it up on third. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 
A strong eight yards will keep this drive rolling. And already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago, so a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there, and they get the first down. Pal to the air on first and ten. This is caught by his tight end, Logan Thomas. So five yards here, five on the play. And it's second down. At the 46-yard line. Back to throw, Howell. On the catch, it's Crowder. Seven yards there at a first down. gun they give to Robinson and great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35 yard line they pick up 11 in addition to moving the chains that was good tough running right up the middle and if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction that's often the end result back to Robinson now on first down and he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards but no more than that second down Second and seven, operating from the 34. Now how? And his throw here is going to be incomplete. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now. It's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yeah, we pretty much supersize them, don't we? Because, you, you know, remember, they're carrying 90 now. And with the new rules, they'll carry 90 all the way through the preseason before they make the final cut. Oh, yeah, a lot of guys to learn for these games. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. A quick throw out wide, caught by Crowder. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. That helps the completion percentage, but not much else. And now it's third and ten. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full ten here to pick up the first down and move the chains. And once more, Hal back to the air. Here's a screen for Robinson. And he'll be stopped short of the first down right around the 18-yard line. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. Field goal unit and Joey Sly now. From the right hash, it's a 35-yard attempt. Sly able to put this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They're both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. And this is into the hands of Andrews downfield. And all the way in for the touchdown. Mark Andrews, 79 yards. And the Elks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. When they drew that up, I don't think they envisioned it ending in a house call. But he got and took it all the way home. Really impressive run after the catch, wasn't it? That was a, that was really special by him. But let's face it, in today's NFL, those tight ends are often former wide receivers 
or maybe even sometimes bigger running backs. They just put them in a position to get a great matchup and make plays like that. Tucker able to connect on the extra point, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Now it's Crowder. Now it's Crowder. And he returns this to the 22. Back onto the field comes this offense, ready for their second drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Sets up the screen to Robinson. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. But I like the play call coming right after a tackle for a loss because this is an obvious passing situation, but instead they fooled them a little bit with the screen, and they wound up getting back what they lost, and then a little bit more. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. So now here in the second week of the preseason, you'd expect the starters play a little bit more than they did in week one, but not a whole lot. So if you're an offensive coordinator, what are you looking for? What you're looking for is things getting cleaned up as you go along because most of your playbook's probably installed. How well are they handling it? Easy in and out of the huddle, no mental mistakes. Are they starting to look like a good offensive football team? So a change of possession here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Play action. It's Jackson. And that is incomplete. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. Got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Oh, Lamar Jackson just so electric, Charles, when he gets into open space, and we saw exhibit A right there. You know something? I'm standing up here in the booth next to you watching the play. He buckled my ankles on that one as well. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you're actually on the field trying to chase him or you're just watching him play. This guy is sheer excitement. Edwards now on first and ten. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Jackson now. That's to Cook out of the backfield. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. Now Jackson. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. A gain of 13 and also a first down. They go play action with Jackson. Well, that's complete to the fullback, Ricard. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the pump ball around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. That guy calls a lot of consternation on the defensive side. You've got to cover him, too. That makes things really difficult. Meanwhile, Jackson's throw complete there to Beckham. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. After one, a 14-3 ball game. Salt Lake City with the football here to begin quarter two. As they go to work on a first and goal. Jackson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. 
On second down, it's Edwards. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. Only a couple yards there, and that's going to set up a long third and goal. From the gun, Jackson. He'll buy some time right. And he is going to go down. Back at the 11-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Now Justin Tucker is out to try the field goal. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. Tucker's kick is good. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. to so three points there, and they continue to build this first half lead. Yeah, every little bit helps. And the more that you can put together drives and start controlling the tempo, controlling possession, finishing with points, the better off you're going to be. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Dublin's offense now set to take over. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Two minutes gone by, second quarter. Brings up second and three. Now he'll look to throw it. And looking for McLaurin, but this is intercepted. Picked up by Patrick Queen. And the return will stop right around the 25. Well, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes, those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. Jackson going to give this one to Edwards. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Now second and five. Brings up second and five. Here's Jackson. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Here's Jackson to throw. Setting up the screen for Cook. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide, and these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. They'll run here with Edwards, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. Oh, and they sent the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still second down. Can't afford another delay here as they come up again on second and goal. Now it's Jackson. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Quan Martin. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, Brandon, as they say in popular culture, this one's going to leave a mark because they can see the end zone, but it'll stay out of reach because of their error. All their offensive teammates have to get with the quarterback right now, offer a little bit of encouragement because what's done is done. Let's get them next time out. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. They got the ball now following a big play, keeping the other guys out of the end zone. Now they'll start deep in their own territory, first and ten. Howell's throw complete there to Thomas. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Just need a yard here, second and one. 
Robinson up the middle. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. 42 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. On first and ten, it's Gibson. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Now here's a fake on the jet sweep and a give to Robinson. And this defense able to plug him up there as he'll get a yard to the 35. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. Powell. and it's incomplete. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. And now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. Take it in at the 22. And just a net of 31 here. 40-yard punt, 9 on the return. And they will take over first and 10. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. A big mistake last time they were on the field, tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question about it. As they head out on the field for this drive, that whole offensive unit is just thinking of redemption. You know, they moved it really well, didn't pay it off. This time, they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. Jackson from the shotgun. He finds the rookie, Zay Flowers. And yeah, that's good for a gain of six. And yeah, that's going to set up a tough third and nine. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, Jackson. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. But things are definitely going right for them here in the first half. Pick a down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. And they run with Edwards off the option. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Off the option, here's Edwards. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running, excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. They run once more with Edwards. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there holding the point of attack and not giving ground. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. To throw is Jackson. He's got his target. That's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That's a gain of 14. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Throwing is Jackson. And he's got it. Touchdown. Rashad Bateman from 19 yards away. And the Elks take a three-touchdown lead. And on this play, he just made a great route. The quarterback had to deliver it, sure, but a great route run there. And, Brandon, this is what the best receivers do. They work on their route running because it's one thing to have athletic ability, but to really get open, you have to set up defensive backs with different routes and be precise in your cuts. Tucker now for the extra point. Yeah. 
And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it's Rashad Bateman who finished it all off with a touchdown. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. Oh, a good return up past the 30. Dublin's offense now set to take over. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and ten. Here's how. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. As we thought they might do here in week two of the preseason, they'd left their starting quarterback out there for this second quarter, but I would imagine we will not see him after halftime. Yeah, this is the time of year you've got to get your backup some reps and make sure you protect your starting quarterback. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. And Howe will throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. Now that's the kind of big play you'd like to see. This first half, it hasn't gone their way, and they could use a shot in the arm, something to perk them up a bit, and they get one here in the passing game. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Throwing here, Howell. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that will bring up second down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Here's second and five now from the 37. Now they go play action with Hal. Targeting Thomas on the out route, making the catch. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. And once more, how back to the air. And he will find his man, Samuel. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. A good gain again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Off play action. It's Hal. And it's caught. Touchdown. Jamison Crowder. A five-yard touchdown. And the Shamrocks are able to cut into that deficit. And partner, they found a gap there on the post pattern, and it was in the middle third of the field. And that's really difficult to do because ordinarily the safeties are back there to prevent that happening. But they found the opening and exploited it. Joey Sly on for the extra point. And this is up and good. That'll make it a score now of 24 to 10. So that drives seven plays in length. And it was all capped off on the touchdown reception by Jamison Crowder. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. Throwing on first down, it's Jackson. A short throw caught by Andrews. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. From the gun, it's Jackson. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively, and now it brings up third down. Now it's Jackson. Trying to get it to Beckham, and it's intercepted. Now he's hit on the return. It's a loose football. And it looks like one of the DBs has it. And a huge return as he'll take this one all the way down inside the 30-yard line. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B, one starts with an S. Ball security. And they preach it. 
They, they have it up in, in the meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock. Al throwing on first down here. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Patrick Queen got in there to stick him. He gets the sack. There's a reason it's our linebackers are often captains of a defense. They call the signals. They have the opportunity to affect the game in coverage against the run and, of course, on blitzes. Living in the best of both worlds here. Already has an interception. Now he gets to record a sack, too. Shoves him away. Now loose football. The ball comes out. And this ball recovered by the offense. But remember, they cannot advance it here in the final two minutes of the half. So this will be blown dead. And it'll come back to the spot of the fumble. Now a throw to the end zone on first down. But it winds up incomplete. Here's second and ten. Now Hal. He gets it to Thomas. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Here comes third down at seven. Powell out of the shotgun. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. The decision to tuck and run gets him three, but that's not enough. Now it's fourth. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Sly able to put this one through, and that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. So they get the turnover in plus territory. The drive stalls out, but still able to get three out of that. Yeah, we were able to see an offense and a defense kind of mix and match with each other, didn't we? Both of them trying to make sure that they have the upper hand and the advantage. Offense trying to get to the end zone. Defense, of course, trying to hold them to a field goal attempt. And it wasn't a guaranteed lock three from where they started. So, you know, the offense has to be happy to come away with those three points. Okay, so Brady, thank you very much. We'll get back Monday to you and Charles in just a minute. Send you back Week two of the preseason is upon us. Each team now with just one more game after this one. And then we'll get it all report. started Coach. as we normally do on the first Thursday after Labor Day. In our game, still a lot to keep an eye on. Guys battling, trying to make a ball club. We'll send it back to two guys already on our team. That's Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Pringle going to stay in the end zone, and this will come out to the 25. Now this offense ready to go to begin this third quarter. Now this offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, but to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. On the counter, Gibson. Oh, he's got a little down. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. It's a 13-yard pickup as the downs reset. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half. Things haven't worked so well in the first go-around. They won't throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Once more, Gibson. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? 
Shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. And now the putter, Tress Way, as he sends this one away. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. So first and 10 now from the 30. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. His throw taken in by Isaiah Likely. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. Ball on the 35. Here comes second and five. They go play action with Huntley. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A gain there of 21 yards. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Huntley off of play action. That's complete to the fullback with Cole. It's pretty easy to overlook the fullback when you're making your assignments defensively in the pass coverage game, but in this case, they made them pay for that oversight and picks up a nice game. On second down, here's the option. And maybe the wrong read there is he's going to go down immediately. They lost four there, and it's third down. But sometimes that option can get bogged down before the gears really even get into motion, and I think that's what we saw there. And I think what he saw, he saw defensive end right in his face because he looked up and he was right there. Didn't even have a chance to get going. First target, first catch, and a first down. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. So he'll be stopped here for no gain. And it'll be second down. Second and 10 at the 32-yard line. Here's the fourth-year man, J.K. Dobbins. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Holding offense. Temporarily out of field goal range now as they come up on a second and long after the holding call. They'll run up the gut with Dobbins. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Now Huntley. And unable to connect. Incomplete. They'll give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. And this is good from 57 yards out. That was bombs away right there, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, maybe a little bit of an anxious moment there as that ball got closer and closer, but it does curl in. Yeah, actually did a little bit of a slow dance there with the left upright, didn't it? But had just enough space, as you said, for it to curl in. Dublin's offense now set to take over. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Well, they had the run for no gain. Now they'll try again from the 25 on second and 10. Here's Brissett. Open man is the tight end, John Bates. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. First target, first catch, and a first down. to throw, Brissad. Under pressure, and down he goes. 
Dropped for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. Uh, defensively on the previous play, they gave up a pretty good chunk of yardage, but right there, they got a good portion of it right back. And if we just flip it around from the offensive perspective, took a nice step forward, and how about a couple of leaps backwards after that play? They've got to figure out a big call coming up here to try and gain that yardage back. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Brissett now. Got an open man. It's Pringle. And he can only manage to take the football to the 40, and that is well shy of the first down marker. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Here's Tressway now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. They'll start by running the option to the right. And he'll lose yardage on this one back to the 13. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, that play never really got off the launching pad. He had a linebacker in his face before he had a chance to do much of anything. Yeah, I think it's big boys up front, that offensive line. They've got to do a little bit better job of protecting him if they're going to continue to run the option like this. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Looking to throw here, Huntley. That is caught. It's a big play there on third down. 41 yards. Another big play right there. And this is where, as an offense, you can really put the hammer down. You've got a double-digit lead, but those other guys, they've been hanging around. A touchdown here could put this game out of reach. And that's a strong step towards getting it done. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Option play, and they'll hand to Dobbins. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. What a difference a play makes. A huge step forward, and now a small step back as he loses a yard or two. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. He'll keep it himself. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And this will be scooped up by the defense. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. He was having success there holding on to it on the option, but ultimately problems downfield, and it results in a turnover. Yeah, and this is a tough one because you know you'd prefer to have your quarterback either heading to the sidelines or getting down at the end of the play. But you've got an aggressive one. He's fighting for extra yardage, and he gets stripped there. You don't need him to be a hero in that situation. You want your quarterback taking care of himself. Brissett's throw taken in by Pringle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. First and 10 at the 47 yard line. Straight ahead, Gibson. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And now you have to wonder, partner, at what point in time do they forget the running game? It's been a struggle so far in this one. I would think they'd have to start throwing it a little bit more. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You're watching preseason football on EA Sports. Welcome back now to the Emerald Isle. As we are set to bring you the home stretch here, the fourth quarter. Brissett. They'll set up the screen for Gibson. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Give him nine yards on the second down screen play. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. Here it's third and two. They'll run with Gibson. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. 
On first down, right back to Gibson. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. 11 yards there, first down. Now Brissett. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Adafi Owe showing off the pass rush skills. But found his way into the backfield, and he simply would not be denied. Well, they say that life's all about opportunities, and that holds true when you're playing defense as well. How about him seeing that chance, making the most of it, did a great job of wrapping him up and bringing him down. They get six yards back on the run, but still have a third and long situation forthcoming. Play fake, Brissad. To the sideline and incomplete. And that's the knowledge you gain from being in this loop for a long time. He's learned the hard way when to give up and fight another down. And that's a smart move to throw it away. Sly able to put this one through. And that will get the disadvantage now back down to 11. They're certainly happy they were able to force the fumble, Charles, but wish they would have gotten in the end zone, only getting three points there and still facing this second-half deficit. And they also will understand it's going to be a whole lot tougher to force another turnover the rest of the game because that offense, they're going to be all about ball security from here on out. Salt Lake City's offense back onto the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. From the 20, here's second and nine. Another run here with Dobbins. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Well, injury's never good, especially here in the preseason. Hopefully nothing serious. They'll take a look at him, and we'll step aside for a moment. On third down, here's Dobbins. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive, a third down gain of eight. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. They'll try to draw here with Dobbins. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. It's a gain of eight, and it'll wind up moving the chains. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. A give up the middle to Dobbins. And he is across midfield from 149 to the other 49. A gain of just two. On this drive, they're two for two on third down conversions. But they need seven yards here. Hardly looks to throw. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. First down, Salt Lake City. On first and 10, it's Dobbins. 
It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out. We've got them now. They'll try to run for it with Dobbins. And they needed two. They could only get one. Fourth down. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay of game, offense. Man, that ain't made no sense. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still fourth down. Now Justin Tucker's out to try the field goal. It'll be spotted on the right hash. A 52-yard attempt. Tucker's kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that maybe not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Out of the gun, Brissett. Back to Gibson and another catch for him. And he is going to lose yardage here. And quickly they get to the line. Brissett from the gun on third. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Brissett on first down. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there. First the ball free, and it's second down. It's now second and ten. Brissette again. Drops it underneath to Gore. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Now a throw here to his running back. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now worth reminding at this point, no overtime in the preseason. But that may not come into play here in a two-score game late. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and ten. Now Brissett. And it's caught. Touchdown. Chad Bates from 19 yards away. And the Shamrocks have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. So they get their tight end away from the line to the outside, and he works his way in for six. Tight ends are not just blockers anymore. I don't know how many more times we need examples, but here's a great one. Gets to the outside. They give him the ball pretty quickly, and they trust him to get those extra yards. And boy, did he come through, bullying his way into the end zone after the nice catch. An extra point by Sly is up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. And the hands team does its job. They're able to secure it. A tough one there. They certainly wanted that when they needed it, but they didn't absolutely have to get it. They still do have three timeouts. You're exactly right. They had to attempt it, but even though they didn't get it, as you noted, with three timeouts, if they can get these stops on defense, all hope is not lost. Ready. 
They'll start by running the option to the right. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as he'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. He's going to keep this again. And he is going to have a first down here. And that should be the one that seals a victory. And they'll indeed take a knee. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they stop it here with a minute seven remaining. And they take a knee. preseason games some teams need the wins more than others you know if you're established and you're used to winning not quite the same but if you're trying to learn how to win it's important to get it done and to be able to kneel down at the end even better so this crowd will not go home happy it's a victory for our visitors and a little bit of a surprise they lose the turnover battle but wind up winning the ball game and this is very unusual because you know all teams stress winning the turnover battle as a key indicator to winning ball games so when you get something that goes against the grain like the one we saw here it's quite the oddity now let's face it they'll be very happy that they pulled this off but they do know that in the future, they've got work on taking care of the football because this won't happen very often. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. So long, everybody.